<laughs> Welcome to Horrors Yet Unseen, the podcast where we assign each other horror movies to watch and then talk about it so our spouses don't have to listen to us go on and on and on about scary stuff they don't like. I'm Zach. And I'm Steve. Let's talk about some scary movies. By the way, there will absolutely be spoilers in this show. You have been warned. We watched last night, Christine, I watched Bottoms, the, the, the comedy. It's not about bottoms or behinds or gluteus maximi. It's about, uh, what do you keep looking at me? <laughs> uh, Explain what the movie Bottoms okay. is, Steve. Bottoms is about, uh, there's a, a couple gay girls who, um, otherwise known as lesbians. <laughs> they are, they're in high school and they, um, they can't get any dates, etc. And uh, so they, they end up starting a, uh, like kind of accidentally starting a um, basically a, a fight club for girls after school, but it's like a, as couch is like a self-defense class. Okay. And uh, Marshawn Lynch is plays their teacher who what? <laughs> he's hilarious, dude. This is on prime, by the way, you should totally watch it. Um, he's their teacher and he, and they, they, they talk him into being um, their sponsor for the, for the thing. And he immediately gets all into like, feminism and having them read books by uh, uh, bell hooks and stuff like that. And then something happens in there, you know, don't want to spoil it, but something happens and he, he's on the outs with them. You know, he, he's mad at them. And so he writes up, he like crosses out feminism on the chalkboard and he writes topic of the day. Why, 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 why president should be all men. <laughs> or something like that. It was pretty good. Mm. But the, the movie uh, it was, it was stinking hilarious, man. It was really funny. Yeah. Yeah. They just came out with the, they just came out with the full, full length trailer for late night with the devil. I saw that. I was really excited yep. about that. Yeah. I thought that it took, it added way more to the story that I thought was going to be at. I thought the teaser for that was going to be, I mean, we can get into this in the episode, but like. I thought well, this teaser... is the episode. Oh, well, <laughs> how was I supposed to know that? Everything's the episode. Every, not gonna, everything. Not getting any of this out. That's tragic. <laughs> I've said way too much. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Well, I'm going to put some, I'm just kidding. I'm going to put some trust in you, buddy. Yeah. I thought it, the new trailer, like the full trailer for the late night thing, late night with the devil. I think it was really, it looks really interesting. Yeah, I thought that. So I have this idea in my mind about Shutter movies mm -hmm. that probably isn't great. Like that they are not good. That they're like preconceived notion type thing. I have a preconceived notion about them. Um, like if if Sci Fi was coming out with like the Sci Fi Channel was coming out with a horror movie, you would kind of mm -hmm. have a preconceived notion about their track record and you probably would be right. like, Oh, it's probably not gonna be that good. You know, right. like the first shutter, honestly, the first shutter movie I saw was, uh, when you asked me to watch, uh, anything for Jackson. Oh yeah. A while ago. Yeah. Yeah. That was the first, first shutter movie that I've watched. Yeah. And I was like, this is not that bad. Yeah. It's not that bad. So I think, you know, late night with the devil, I, I don't know how many Shutter movies go to theaters, you know, but this is going, mm. you know, directly to directly to theaters. And, um, and I don't know how that stuff works either. Is it they do they funded the thing or did they did somebody make it? And then Shutter said, I want to buy the rights to that to distribute that or probably right. all of the above. Mm. Right. Yeah. I don't know if it's like a Shutter original kind of mm -hmm. kind of concept. But I mean, when this episode airs. The movie will be out in theaters. Oh, it isn't. It is going to theaters. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, March twenty second. It it's going to be in theaters. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try to 
head to my locale theater and bring my blankie and my little piddle and Your little piddle hide behind it because <laughs> I'm so scared. <laughs> yeah, sorry if that made anybody upset because I talk like a little, 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 little baby. <laughs> Also, I saw the TikTok that was like, oh, you got your widow widow and your TRD. Have you seen that TikTok? No, I'm not. Steve, again, your life is getting in the way of some real great things going on in the rest of the world. Yeah, well, sorry about that. Try to, you know, make your life difficult I, because of my life. I don't think that whatever. you're, I feel like, don't feel like you're sorry. I don't, I feel like I'm it's not, like a fake no. apology. Um, yeah, so um, I'm very curious about whether or not this Late Night with the Devil movie is has any basis in real life. Hmm. I've not Googled oh, it. Oh, like, is it actually based on an actual Late Night thing? I mean, or if any of the, if any of the subjects, hmm. any of the uh, acts in on the late night show. So maybe the late night show itself is not pulled from real life, but maybe right. this subject is, or maybe some weird wacky host who only got one season, mm, you know, mm-hmm. did something like this, or maybe uh, it's pulled from like, you know, weird public access television, you know, that's right. like doing Halloween specials and things like that. And by the way, can we please bring back public access television? It's called YouTube, man. No, man. The wackadoos in your town need a real, they need a venue. And I know that we live in an era where everybody's got smartphones and cameras and blah, 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 yeah. whatever. Yeah. But I, I mean, there's just something special about watching like old 1990s, 1980s, 1970s public access television. Really? Like, I, I, just I, I, the I have weirdos. a hard time wanting to watch something that bizarre. Like, it, it's like, I don't know, you know, more power to them. <laughs> I mean, it's not for me. Well, I'm going to send you a couple of TikToks and then you'll okay. see what I'm talking about. Because right. uh, I think we need to start this up. How about this? There is no video. There's no VHS video dating anymore. We need it. Mm. We need a service, a brand new service to add to the tr- <laughs> the trillion other services that are out there. Okay, like old, like a, and we could we could market it as um, vintage or like old school type. Yes. Of? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The the uh, hipster millennials would probably think it's pretty rad. Yes. Well, or something. I'm not doing it for them. I'm doing it for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but not them. Because you just said hipster millennial and my, the 89 year old man that lives in my heart went. Rrr. So <laughs> even though I am also a millennial, but that yeah. doesn't matter. Um, okay. Well, there's a, there's one other trailer I wanted to talk to you about. It's the fallout series. Have you seen I the saw that. Fallout? Yeah. Yeah. That does look really good. I, I we have like Fallout Four, um, the the game on PS4. Mm-hmm. I haven't played it a lot. It's just not my style of game. It's one of those yep. games that takes a lot of time. To sit in front of it and do it. But the right. trailer looks really good, and it's got some bigger, big, bigger names than I thought would be in it. Right. Yeah. I. I mean, it's got Uncle Baby Billy in it, so that's absolutely. Fantastic. You know. Yeah. Um, I hope our listeners know exactly what I'm talking about. If, I'm, if they don't, they I'm can just shut the really. podcast off right now. And well, yeah, we don't want you listening. <laughs> we don't want you around here. <laughs> exactly. If you don't know Uncle Baby Billy, get the heck out of here. <laughs> like, what is this? That's crazy. But also, please don't, please don't shut it off. Please don't. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's a, Amazon. I didn't know that. I thought it was going to be more of a movie. Apparently, it's a. It's like it's a series. Um, yeah, it's a series on Amazon Prime, and um, I have it... zero reference for what the video game actually is or what 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 I'm about to watch. Yeah, I have no clue because I don't play video games. But you know, I like fun. the aesthetic of it. Yeah, it's it's like, it's like a post apocalyptic thing. People right. who survived underground are now coming back up, and life is crazy. 
you, you had it written down here, the Parasite, the gray trailer. Do you see that? Yeah, that looked wild. Yeah, and I, I saw that, and I thought, the first thing I thought is, this is this has got to be Japanese. <laughs> and it was. Uh, I, the uh, Or actually, it, the, the movie as, it, it itself is actually in Korean, but it's based on a Japanese manga. Mm. And uh, because with people with with their heads like uncurling and becoming massive giant tentacles with like floating eyeball things yep 100% manga originally slash anime thing oh 100% i'm in yeah that looks it looks good yeah can't tell who who's human who you can trust mm-hmm. yeah i'm i'm in i turn on the subtitles watch it. i also saw the trailer for or a trailer for uh long legs have you seen that yet no long legs. Ooh, that looks really good. It looks super bizarre. It looks kind of right up my alley. Scary and bizarre. It comes out in April. Long legs trailer. Mm-hmm. That's and a it Nicolas is a Cage movie. It is a Nick Cage movie. Yes. What? But he's huh. not even in the trailer that I saw. So I don't know what's going on with that. But um, apparently, the marketing for that movie is super weird. The they have all these like videos out there that, and you can do this like uh, online scavenger hunt sort of thingy and uncover more information about it. And then, um, I, I mean, I haven't gone to all that trouble. Yeah, I I remember when Cloverfield was coming out, and J.J. Abrams was making that, and they had a bunch of like online Easter eggs that you can go and yeah try to find all of that and then there were it was interconnected with all of the other movies that were going to be coming out and that was a lot of fun but i will have to check out nick cage's new movie yeah because it's nick cage and <laughs> he is a freaking gem he is a gem he's a gem he's a gem he's also i mean how many movies does that guy have out all of all of the movies they're pretty much all of nick cage movies aren't they all right now? I think every movie, yeah, every movie coming out in 2024 at least has a cameo. You gotta look for Nick Cage. He was in Mean Girls, you know what I mean? (laughs) He's gonna be in the new Ghostbusters movie. He's gonna be, I mean, what other, the movie that we just talked about, he's gonna be in the Fallout series. Wild. Okay, so, uh, Letterboxd says that he has been in 131 movies. Yeah. I, I think I wrote I'm down here 1,097. Well, that's, that that's pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. And I've seen 7% of them. You've seen 7% of his 100 and some odd movies? Apparently. Yeah. Probably more than that, just like older movies. Like, yeah. I've seen The Rock. Okay. Yeah. I hadn't had that in there. Um, yeah. The Rock was good. The Rock was great. Yeah. What about Con Air? <clears throat> Have you seen Con Air? No, I've not. What? Okay, so you have you seen the unbearable weight of massive talent? Yes, dude, that, that that's is good. the best movie. Yeah, that's a fun movie. Yeah, and I love I, and I love how that's like it's all it's about him being himself. Yeah, yeah, cool. I love that they take drugs in that movie and they both smile at, like they're smiling at each other in the car, and they're just <laughs> j- trying to jump and do parkour up the wall and whatnot. And I'm like, you guys are high, and it's awesome. Parkour, parkour. And you could not have picked, they could not have picked a better co-star to, to star Absolutely alongside not. Nicolas Cage as he's going full Nick Cage. Right. Like, <laughs> best, co, best co-star best co right there. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, so I saw several movies this week. Um, I saw a 1BR, as, a, as in one bedroom. Okay. And the Neon Demon Raw, R-O-H. Which apparently is, um, yeah, it's Malaysian for soul, S O U L, and then I then I saw Bottoms and The Innocence. The Innocence, yeah, The Innocence is a really creepy, <laughs> uh, Nordic, uh, uh, Norwegian whatever film. It's pretty good. Well, okay. Yeah. So, what's your new favorite show, Zach? Uh, Golden Girls. What? What? It's the Golden Girls. Are you serious? I'm one 
hundred percent serious. One hundred percent. Yep. Yeah, what, what, what brought that on? Uh, well, I, <laughs> I mean, the theme song first, straight banger. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Come on. Thank you for being a friend. Come on. Thank, Thank you for being a friend. friend. Yep. Well, now we got to copyright that, so you know. Travel down the road back yeah. again. I'll stop, I'll stop. I'll stop. There it is. Yeah, because we're going to get sued. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, Ghost of Betty White's going to come back and get us, dude. We got to knock that crap She's off. too nice. I don't know. She's a prankster. Um, yeah, so I don't really know. I just had never seen the show. Hmm. And I was kind of looking for a new show. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm waiting for the boys to come back. And that's oh, yeah, yeah. taking its sweet freaking time to come back and i don't know i was just bored so i was like i'm gonna watch episode one see if i like it because sometimes season one takes you a minute to kind of get into and um yep nope not me i jumped in episode one laughing my head off i mean this it's a great it's a great show i'm on like i'm almost through with season one and, uh, well, you know, I mean, with all we, this horror, it's probably good that you're watching the Golden Girls. Can I yeah. balance that out? Yeah. I mean, you know, so yeah, it's just, I don't know. I don't know what, what happened, but I was, I, I literally, I'm recovering from being sick. I got, yeah, I still same. got some like congestion in my, in my chest. And, uh, I was sitting on the couch the other night with, with a blanket, my iPad, Doing a color by number on my iPad, mm-hmm. and the Golden Girls are on, mm-hmm. and I hacked up some phlegm, and I realized in that moment I'm an old man, hundred <laughs> percent. It's just another layer. The Golden Girls have uh, has completely unlocked another layer of my old manness. Did you have a blanket over your legs? Just the bottoms, yeah. See, there you go. Definite old man. Yeah. just the my legs and my feet yeah, yeah, yeah. and like that was it it wasn't a quilted blanket like it wasn't a sewn together sure, quilted sure. blanket we do have one of those but just enough to keep your legs and feet warm right just enough to keep my legs and feet warm and i was doing a coloring book on my on my ipad yeah and i was watching yeah you're old yep yeah, that's it that's all i need so we, uh, love, as we are wont to do, uh, we pick movies for each other. And uh, it looks like I'm first this week. Yeah. Right? You were first this week. I watched the movie Devil. Just Devil. Not The Devil. It's just Devil. Devil. Correct? Yep. 2010. By 2010 by M. Night Surprise at the End. I mean, I mean, Shyamalan. Yep. Um, didn't love it, Zach. What? Did not love it. You did not love it. No, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna two and a half star it. Two and a half. Oh man, that's surprising. So here, here's so, uh, Devil 2010. Actually, it's directed by John Eric Dowdle, but it's uh, uh, where's uh. Shaman, he's a producer, uh, right? On it, right? Okay, so um, it's got a two point six on Letterbox, which is you know just slightly above average. Um, premise is a group of people are trapped in an elevator high above Philadelphia, and one of them is the devil. Um, I think that what ruined it for me was that uh, description, because I was immediately thinking, okay, one of them's the devil. And this is a movie tied to M. Night Shyamalan. It's going to be somebody that I don't expect. And within 15 minutes of the movie, I'm like, oh, that's who it is. <laughs> I was right. And I think that's what kind of disappointed me. Because I think if I hadn't had that, to be honest with you, I think I would have li- I would have liked the movie a lot more. I think they ruined So the it. synopsis of the movie kind of... Not the guessing, but the synopsis was the thing that... The synopsis ma- made me want to guess. And I think that had... if Call the movie... 
Um, see, this is a this is the problem with marketing movies. It's the same thing you have when you have all these trailers these days that are the entire movie in the trailer. I'm mm-hmm. like, what? Christy and I are watching trailers all the time. We're like, oh, I don't need to see that movie now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got it. And so my problem with this one is that it's called Devil and they you look it sets you up that the entire time you're trying to figure out who the devil is. Then they really put it out there. Like I, I thought actually until I just now saw it, I thought Shaman directed it. Because they're like they you know, his name's all over everything. Right. And so just because of the way that things are set up, the marketing of it, I, I kind of messed it up for me only because it just I was just obsessed with trying to figure out who it was the whole time and, and everybody like they kind of go through the characters and every one of them seems to be the obvious choice. You know, the, the, the mattress salesman guy, he's a total jerk. Like, Hmm, is he the devil? And then the, uh, the security guard. Uh, and then the lady at the end who like the last living woman, and she, you know, she's, she, uh, she, the, the, just everything they, the way they set it up was, I don't know. If they'd named the movie, they, here, here's what we, we should rewind time. Let's name the movie, um, I don't know, Suffocation or Trapped or <laughs> something mm. like that. And then uh, don't just just say that, uh, they're trapped in an elevator that then and they're dying one by one or something. I don't know. And I think I would have liked it a lot more. Because, like, so, I mean, the setup is basically these f- uh, five people, they get stuck in an elevator together and... I like, I do like how they, like every single one of them was, was sort of like the last person in the elevator kind of thing. Like, Oh, hold on, wait for me. And they kind of accidentally show up together and it's a mystery why the elevator stops. Then one, one by one, they are all getting killed off, uh, including the person who is the devil seemingly gets killed off. Meanwhile, cops are trying to get in. They're trying to do everything they can to get in. People are trying to find, to get them die. Then there's a, a the, this detective on the outside who has this you know difficult past, and one of the one of the guys in the elevator turns out, and this was actually not a bad twist. Spoiler alert! <laughs> turns out he he was the guy who uh, was a hit and run driver that killed the detective's family, mm-hmm. and uh, that that thought that was good, but uh, it annoyed me at the first as well because the whole setup is that. This is happening. The devil showed up because somebody committed suicide. And I thought, I don't know if I, I don't know if I like that. It seemed it seemed so. This movie seemed preachy. That's what it was. Mm. It also seemed a bit preachy. Got it. I don't know. It seemed kind of preachy, and about uh, there's a whole thing about like uh, asking for forgiveness, and that made everything better. I don't know. I it, it's one of those mixed mixed feelings things. Because it had a lot of good parts to it, um, they did a really good job of the building the suspense. And I don't know. Sorry, I didn't like it more because I know you you had like a five star rating. On I this love one. the movie. I thought it was, I thought it was at least a decent. I'm sure that there were, I'm sure that there were things in it that were probably not great. But like I said in in the previous episode. I rated all of those movies on the way that I felt when I saw them oh, in yeah. that particular moment. So maybe on a second or third watch, I might go, I might lower my rating. But at the time I was like, I think that this is, and I might've just gone full fanboy. I might've <laughs> just gone full fanboy of M night, M night Shyamalan yeah. and just been like, this is the best movie in the world. Um, when, the fact is, is that it might not be. So, mm-hmm. you know, I want to give it some space or give myself some space to uh, be completely wrong with that one. But well, and at know. the same time, I don't, I don't want to in, imply that if you don't like a movie or if I like if I don't like a movie that you like, that that means you're doing it wrong. No, no, uh, I, you, you know, I like, don't like, think like that your at thing, all. like your thing. I don't I don't think that at all. I I'm not necessarily bummed about it. I you know, I think it's interesting that you didn't you didn't like the movie, but also I'm slightly bummed because I wanted you to like the movie. That's why I picked it. Like Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you uh, here's here's the movie that I think would be good for you to yeah. watch and then uh it turns out yeah. to not be 
not be your thing. That's fine. I'm I may need to rewatch it and then give an honest updated rating about this movie now. And that's okay. Yeah. I don't have a whole lot to say to be honest, but just cuz it was a it was a very Shyamalan type movie. Um the twist at the end of the movie yeah. was not as satisfying as other twists that he has had in his other movies. And mm. so that may be the fact that those twists are directly associated with him directing, mm. not just executive producing. So his hand is on like m- more on the wheel mm. um, in the sixth sense than, than in devil. Um, right. And so the twist was not some mind altering, mind blowing out of left field. Holy cow kind of moment. Right. You know, uh, like Bruce Willis is dead the whole time. And so, or like the fact that what he directed the village, didn't he? Was the village? Yeah. 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 I, I like the village. The village was, the village was great. The fact that it wasn't, it poses as this like what? 1600s, mm-hmm. 1700s, 1800s kind like of movie. The the <laughs> right. Exactly. It It poses itself like that. And then she jumps over the fence and falls onto a paved road. And you're like, what? It's not real. Like that was, that was wild. I did not see that coming. And I neither did I. And um, yeah. So this movie didn't necessarily have that. So maybe my five stars is just breaking news right now. (laughs) My five stars is me going full fanboy on it's in my trouble. On. Ah! <laughs> well, you know, it's one of those, it's one of those, um, I, I totally do the same thing. I have multiple times I've watched a movie and gone. That is the best freaking movie I've ever seen. Five stars. Two days go by and I'll go look back at my list. I'm like, did, was it wasn't that good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I just had like a really good piece of pie. Exactly. <laughs> like yeah. right mental state. The you know? light was right. Right. In the, right. In the room, you were really comfy. Right. You know. Got my blanket across my legs. Exactly. Your color on your iPad. Color on my iPad. Yeah. 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 I mean, I've got a lot of movies like that that, and maybe, maybe we should, that that's a good one, like uh, movies that we like that everybody else hates. <laughs> Yeah, two star movies on 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 everybody else's reviews that we we love. That so you mean like like Killer Clowns from Outer Space? Uh, no, that one's a uh, undeniable classic. I know what you're talking. Don't about. lie to me. <laughs> Don't lie to me. <laughs> the Sorry, first I... time I brought up Killer Clowns from Outer Space, you were like, "What the heck are you talking about?" And then when I introduce you to Killer Clowns from Outer Space, which is crazy that you've lived as long as you have, you don't even know about this movie. The fact that you were like, Zach, this is utter trash. And I'm like, Steve, (laughs) you are, you're out of your mind. It is the best movie ever. It's because it's trash. That's what makes it good. It it fully went in circles because some movies don't. Some movies start out as trash and finish as trash. Right. They're just bad. This movie was so bad, it ended up being good. <laughs> it ended up being good. You can't say that about See, a lot of a lot of those trash kind of movies. And I think I figured out some of the the, the key to watching trash movies. Edibles. It's edibles. Our, edibles. In altered state of mind. <laughs> edibles are, are one step. Another step is watching them with other people. Because... When I, I tried to watch Killer Clowns from Outer Space. I don't know how many times. Like as a favor to you, my friend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I just I couldn't get like more than 20 minutes in. Like when they get onto the, the spaceship, I'm like, are you kind of kidding me? <laughs> um, and then I, 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 I promised you at one point several months ago, I'm like, I'm going to watch the thing. And uh, I, my son happened to be in the room and he watched it with me. And we laughed at stuff and like bouncing all like kind of pointing at stuff, bouncing things off each other. And I had a great time. It was a fun, yeah. fun watch. And it was like, okay, I, I see where Zach's coming from. 
But it I took just... you 16 times to actually watch it. <laughs> yeah. But but with another person. And I think there's a lot to be said for watching. Uh, there's It's kind of a different experience when you're we're watching a movie with people versus you know, on my phone or <laughs> on the iPad laying in bed or something by myself. Right. Uh, right. I completely understand. I completely understand. But I'm still not giving the thing five stars. Well... You're not giving the devil five stars. You're not going to give no, killer clowns. Killer clowns. <laughs> oh wow. Okay. Well, we'll we'll talk about that later. Um, <laughs> okay. There there was there was one movie I feel kind of very similar about. Speaking of uh, mm-hmm. like like in the moment, giving it five stars, but maybe down the line. So I just finished watching uh, Bones and All. Oh yes. Like this morning. Oh, you did. I started my day with bones and all. Oh, that's a bad day to that bad way to start the day. Well, (laughs) well, uh, dark way to start the day. I hey, listen, it's overcast here and it's rainy. I was like, I'm not doing anything. Let's start with bones and all. So, five stars. That movie's awesome. Yeah, that movie made me cry. But dark. It's emotional. Yes, it is. It the callbacks. Like especially at the end, yeah, crazy. Uh, the the last scene, like that that ver the very last moment when you know he's like, "You need mm-hmm. to eat me." Like that's crazy, bones and all. That's a yeah. That was an incredibly emotional scene, and yeah, uh, just a, really a, a crazy way to to end the movie. It was a great movie. I gave it. I gave it initially. On Letterbox, I immediately open it up, swiped all the way over. Mm-hmm. One star, five stars, immediately. Swipe right. Boom. Exactly. Boom. Five stars. Then I, and then I sat there for about 30 minutes, and I was like, eh, maybe not five stars. Let's go down to four and a half. I don't know where this movie will settle. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not going to settle less than four stars. I guarantee it. it's such a good movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's one of those movies that I was like, why did I wait to watch this? I should have watched this immediately. What the heck was I thinking? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know that I knew about the movie to be honest with you, but my point being is that the movie started out at five stars and you know, the more I actually thought about it, which might just simply mean I need to give my reviewing some time to breathe. I've thought the same thing. You know, because if I give something five stars, that should indicate that it could not have done been done better. Right? Right. I mean, that if it's a five star scale, it can't get any better than this. I, yeah, For this I mean, movie. I I. I wonder I wonder that sometimes if an actor dies mm-hmm. like maybe in in the middle of post production mm. and then the movie comes out if mm. that somehow taints people's view of their performance in the movie not necessarily mm-hmm. I mean maybe they maybe they did knock it out of the park but would you, the question really is, would you say the same thing if you, if they were still alive? It's an unanswerable question. Give an example or did that happen? Okay. Um, the only major example that I can think of is going to be Heath Ledger's Joker. Oh, okay. like that's yeah. the only example that I really have. Yeah. Um, or at least it's, it's the most prominent example because now obviously like, I don't think Heath died. During the production. During the production of the movie or anything like that. But I just, it makes me wonder. Mm. I do think that there was something about Heath's performance of that particular Joker character that was five star. Nothing could have been better. Heath Mm -hmm. tapped into something that was fantastic. But it's it's, it's a bad example. In, in this particular case, because it's the only example that I can kind of come up with. Uh, but anyway. Yeah, I gave Bones and All four stars as well. 
Yeah, I I gave it. I, I set it on four and a half. We'll see where it it finally lands. I might adjust my my rating, but I yeah. It's apparently it's a it's a novel as well. And oh wow, uh, in the novel it's a little bit more supernatural ish. But I like what they did with the movie. Yeah, yeah. So I don't want to stray too far from from the yeah. devil, though. You know, um, <laughs> which is the I'm craziest take that audio clip. <laughs> and we just. Pause for a second. To I don't want to stray too far from the devil, you know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I took the devil to work with me. Uh, Black Phillip now watches over me as I. As oh, I... yeah. Magnet. Yep. I, I, I noticed you put it in your office, not at your home. It's yeah. Really wise. I, I took it to work with me. Nobody has commented on it yet, but <laughs> I'm sure. That somebody will ask me why I have a black goat live deliciously magnet. And then I will have to explain who the devil is to them. And why they should watch the movie The Witch immediately when they get home. Right. And in front of their children. <laughs> yeah, grab your families. Sit down and watch uh, this movie. Speaking of not uh, straying far from the devil. Uh, what what movie? What, tell us about the movie you watched. Okay, all right. Uh, Jacob's Ladder. Steve, you wanted me to watch Jacob's Ladder. So, I knew nothing about this movie going in. I did not even know it existed. Um, Or maybe I did. It was on my IMDb, or on my letterbox. I have no Mm -hmm. clue. I have no recollection that I put this movie on a watch list at all. But I at least knew nothing about the plot. Never saw a trailer. Uh, maybe I've seen the poster, you know? Mm-hmm. So we're going to get into, I'm going to get into this movie deep. So there will be spoilers in my review. So yeah. buckle up the IMDB synopsis says this morning, his dead child, a haunted Vietnam veteran attempts to uncover Nothing. He's freaking dead the whole movie. And you don't realize it until the end of the movie. And you end up wasting an hour and 53 minutes of your life that you'll never get back because the director in the studio produced the movie and don't care about you. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Wait, that's out. in the synopsis? <laughs> Sorry. That's uh, that's my bad. That's my bad. Let me take a breath. Reread that. Okay. The grief. Glad that I got that off my chest. <laughs> I told you this is going to be spoilers right out the gate. Wow. Yeah. Okay, 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 proceed. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> IMDb synopsis. Mourning his dead child. A haunted Vietnam veteran attempts to uncover his past while suffering from a severe case of dissociation. To do so, he must decipher reality and life from his own dreams, delusions, and perceptions of death. That's a uh, really interesting synopsis for this movie. Yeah. I, I've i got to say, this is one of the worst Home Alone movies I've ever seen in my whole <laughs> life. I don't, I don't know what like the, they were thinking. This is Home Alone, like the prequel. This is prequel to Home Alone. They, <laughs> I don't know what the heck they were thinking. I say that because Macaulay Culkin's in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> and by that logic, any movie that Macaulay... Macaulay Culkin is in is a Home Alone movie, um, but the, you know, well, that's that's that, a fact. Yeah, that might be faulty logic, but also one hundred percent true. So, the Google synopsis though gives me a little bit of a better version. To hmm. like when I read it, it made more sense for me to bounce off of as far as my review was concerned. So here's what Google uh, said about the uh, movie Jacob's Ladder. After returning home from Viet from the Vietnam War, veteran Jacob Singer struggles to maintain his sanity. Plagued by hallucinations and flashbacks, Singer rapidly falls apart as the world around him morphs and twists into disturbing images. His girlfriend, Jesse, and ex-wife Sarah tried to help, but to little avail. Even Singer's chiropractor friend, Lewis, fails to reach him as he descends into madness. Okay, so I'm going to break that That's down. That's better, yeah. 
I'm going to break that down. Uh, yeah, you understand now after reading it why, like, that's just a whole lot better of a synopsis to, to break down. Okay. So, do you remember what I said about The Shining and how some movies are probably more appreciated in the time that they came out? Yeah. Yep. yep. I kind of feel this way about this movie. Okay. I don't know if I think I would have appreciated this movie for what it was in 1990 when it came out. Hmm. Okay. Um, I'm not saying that it's a bad movie. It's, uh, you know, definitely a 90s movie. You Unmistakable 90s movie. And I thought it had very interesting, a very interesting visual take on the PTSD of post-war. Um, so I'm going to break down the Google synopsis. After returning home from the Vietnam War, veteran Jacob Singer struggles to maintain his sanity. The problem is what I wrote down. The problem with that sentence mm -hmm. is that Jacob never returns home from Vietnam. Now, granted, you don't know this until the end of the movie, right. which is my biggest problem with the movie. That fact took it down several stars for me. Really? Um, yeah. I mean, this is from the man who likes the twist at the end. Yep. That's that's the weird part. It was the way that it was delivered. Hmm. There, because there is. I'm going to get into that. I'm going to okay. get into that in in my in my review here. Um, moving past that, though, it's clear from the beginning of the movie that Jacob is struggling to maintain his sanity. In the opening scene, something happens to those soldiers in that battle that did seem a quite did seem a bit fishy to me. Mm -hmm. But, you know, then also my conspiratorial brain takes over and goes, I know that the US government does some pretty shady things in the fog of war and so it makes complete sense that I immediately was like, freaking U.S. government is the problem here. <laughs> the U.S. Yeah. government is the problem here. And, but I was like, I don't have enough. I don't have any information to, to, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. But again, I put my tinfoil hat on and was like, I know exactly. <laughs> I'm going to blow the roof off. I, but I have no, realistically, I have no frame of reference for any of, any of that stuff. Plagued by hallucinations and flashbacks, Singer rapidly falls in, falls apart as the world around him, or as the world and people around him, morph and twist into disturbing images. The movie does a good job at mixing reality and delusion. There were times that I didn't even know where reality was versus what was going on inside Jacob's mind. There's some pretty obvious stuff, like that lizard creature dancing mm -hmm. with, and then doing whatever came out of his girlfriend's mouth in that. Like, was it a horn? <laughs> what the heck was that? Like this leg, this lizard tail or whatever reptilian tail is waving around her leg. And then close up of her face. And she shoots out this horn out of her mouth. And I'm like, Oh, and, and there's, there's the proper response. <laughs> strobe lights. And you're like, what the heck? So that's pretty clear. He's losing his mind. Yeah. But um, there was another scene where he broke his back and right. they take him down for an x-ray. They're like, all right, right. he's, he's kind of struggling and he's still coherent. So, you know, but then he maybe passes out or something like that. And they're like, all right, he's out. Let's take him down for an x-ray. And the next scene, he's being wheeled into a very dingy, disgusting basement. And I'm like, wait, is this real? And it wasn't. And it gets grosser, like worse and worse the further you go. Yeah, Exactly. The, 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 the patients. And I realized, oh, we they seamlessly mix this this delusion into, quote unquote, reality. And I. I got so wrapped up in it that like I fell for that, that trick. And I didn't really know what was, what was really fake. And I thought that that was, that that was good. I, I yeah. liked, I liked both the grandiose, very obvious delusion 
and then the delusion that was so close to home that me as a viewer did not know where reality began and where you know the delusion uh, began. One of the aspects of the movie that I liked was Jacob's fear of dying and how he needed to let that go. That fear was the main reason for his hallucinations. Uh, yeah, so the army's drug, the ladder, um, right. you find out it's called the ladder later on in the movie. The drug that they gave them taps into the victim's greatest fear. And so Jacob's greatest fear is dying. So once they piece that together, you kind of go play the movie back in your mind. and You're like, oh, everything that was a delusion to Jacob had something to do with him dying. And then and then you started to play out like, well, he had like a hundred and six degree fever. Was that was that real or was that just his his delusional mind uh, playing tricks on him and, and what was real and what was not real. And, and the, the movie immediately then started to kind of mess with my mind, which is probably the thing that they're going for. Yeah. At this point, because I'm so engrossed in the movie there, there were hints. If I'm looking back on it, there were hints that he's not been alive this the whole time. But on first watch, you right. aren't really picking up on any of that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, I up to that point, I was like, this is a weird and wacky kind of like, I like the way that they're portraying the PTSD, which sounds very um I don't like the way that that just came out of my mouth because PTSD no, I, is not something to. Didn't, he didn't say you liked the PTSD. In, enjoy, but right. the portrayal of it was, um, yeah. I I don't know what other word to say. Is it, it's not in, enjoyable. So, his girlfriend Jesse and ex wife Sarah tried to help him, but little avail. Nothing could be further from the freaking truth. Yeah, that's. With this sentence, uh, Jacob, Jacob said that Sarah kicked him out and Jesse wildly swings from one extreme to the ne- to the next one minute. She wants she can't put up w- with his mental state anymore. And the next minute that she's all lovey dovey and nurturing and neither one of these ladies, quote unquote, help Jacob at all. Yeah. Jacob snaps and Sarah kicks him out and Jesse literally in the scene where he gets the 106 degree fever she's like i can't stand your crap blah 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 blah, blah. and he gets sick and she's like oh let me come and take care of you and get some ice and blah blah, blah. and i'm like you're not helping you are yeah i don't know you she wasn't yeah, helping <laughs> She was it, it almost sounds not... like you're you're basing the your review on the the Google synopsis. No. Okay, the, the Google com- comparing the Google. So I wrote down my review and then yeah. read the Google thing and was like, oh. I could I could bounce my review off of these key things, and it also like caused me to write a a longer review because I was then also you know riffing off of this stuff based off how the movie made me feel so even singer's chiropractor friend lewis fails to reach him as he descends into madness this sentence is also very wrong with Mm -hmm. as far as the movie is concerned absolutely lewis is jacob's only friend yeah his army friends completely abandon him for seemingly no reason whatsoever he cannot count on Jesse at all. He cannot count on Sarah at all. And I, at one point I thought that this was, I thought that this movie was pro chiropractor propaganda. Like the chiropractor is going <laughs> to save the dang day. Cause no joke, man. At one point in the movie, he breaks his back. This is at the end of the movie. He breaks mm-hmm. his back. 
He's in the hospital, surrounded by medical, trained medical professionals, graduates of medical school. They're taking care of him and his chiropractor Are in they? some wild, loony way. Breaks in, bursts in to the hospital. Hooting and hollering and screaming. And, Jacob, where are you? Like he's just losing his mind. Finds yeah. Jacob. Starts just ripping stuff apart. To pull Jacob out of bed. Put him in a wheelchair. And just to go give him a chiropractic adjustment. And I'm like, this, this movie is pro-chiropractor propaganda. Like, that's what this is. <laughs> the, the director of the movie... Just found out about chiropractors. And he went in, got his first adjustment. He Loved felt it. he felt great. <laughs> like he was walking on cloud nine, dude. Yeah. And then went, I'm inspired. I'm going to write a movie. It's called Jacob's Ladder. And the star of the movie is going to be none other than the chiropractor. Like he's going to save the day. Because not, not just in the way... It's too small of a thing, he thinks. It's too small of a thing to just crack his back and fix his problems. No, he's got to come up with some deeper philosophical thing to to save his mind because the director also thinks, I'm going to ruin everyone's day with the 153-hour movie and reveal at the end that Jacob's been dead the whole time. And so, end of my rant is nearly over. So, anywho. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this movie is just one one train wreck <laughs> on to the next. Okay. The other reason I think that this sentence is wrong about the chiropractor not being able to reach him is because at the end of the movie, Lewis tells Jacob. I had actually wrote down this quote. He said, Eckhart saw hell too. He said the only thing that burns in hell is the part that, of you that won't let go of life, your memories, your attachments. They burn them all away. But they're not punishing you, he said. They're feeding your soul. So the way he sees it, if you are frightened of dying and you're holding on, you'll see devils tearing your life away. But when you've made peace, then the devils are really angels freeing you from the earth like mm. it's in that moment that jacob then completely realizes he's he's hanging on yeah i think he he goes back to his apartment he looks at some old army memorabilia then he he basically goes back home mm -hmm. like he goes back to his old condo in new york there or is it new york that that they live i'm, I'm not uh, i sure. think so yeah yeah um and yeah because he's he's a uh not a taxi driver he Close is a mailman me. yeah yeah so but nobody's home like dinner's on the table but no like eating yeah. but nobody nobody's home he sits on the couch and he looks over he's kind of you can kind of see him just contemplating stuff he looks over and his son, played by Macaulay Culkin, the one who died while Jacob was in Vietnam, appears on the step and is like, come on, dad, let's go upstairs. And the two of them go upstairs and it literally, quote unquote, flashes back. It's not a flashback because it's an yeah. actual reality. He's dead. They yeah, pronounced him, they pronounced him dead in Vietnam. In Vietnam, yeah. And um, so at that point, the amount of screaming I did at my television was palpable, Steve. Really? It made me upset. Hmm. I did not want tinfoil hat Zach to win. I didn't want that. <laughs> I, I enjoyed the movie. I thought the movie was just fine. There were some very wacky aspects of the movie that made me wonder why they were in there, but I think you could justify them by going PTSD mm -hmm. um, yeah. or lean heavily into the 
what is reality, what is delusion method that they were uh, going for. Right. But I did not like I you want him to be like, yeah, you released it. Now you can freely live your life. Not now you can go off and be in heaven now. And like, no, I want him to be mentally free and everything be fine. And it felt like I wasted my time because none of what I watched was actually real. All of it was happening in the synapses of a dead man. A dying man. A dying man. It was all happening between his ears. But he never left Vietnam. Right. And that twist, because it was delivered, in my opinion, it was delivered poorly. And um, so I said this. I'm going to give this movie two and a half stars out of five. It's not a smoking hot turd, but like I said, the ending where we found out he was dead the whole time was not done well. M. Night Shyamalan is the only one I think who can pull this ending off or this twist off and get away with it. Uh, I would also say that I think the studio is playing a little loose and fast with calling this movie a horror. There were horror aspects of the movie. Dude, it's a freaky movie. There's some scary crap in that. Ah, do they? I think if 1990s child Zach was watching this movie, he would say, yes, mommy, I'm going to pee the bed tonight. But I'm an adult. <laughs> I, I haven't had that problem since last week. So we're all good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, thriller. I think this movie would be better considered to be a thriller, mm-hmm. not horror. Again, horror aspects. There were horror, like the, right. the fact that they stuck that needle in his, they took him down for the x ray. There was that person with like the skin that grew over their, their eyes. Yeah, that's frightening. That's unusual. There was the beginning of the movie where he's caught in the subway and there's the dude napping and there's that thing wiggling between the dude's legs and you're like, what the heck is that? Horror? Nope. Interesting and odd and quirky? Yeah. I wouldn't necessarily call this movie a horror. But that gets us into deeper waters with uh, the question yeah. I, I posed to you a couple weeks ago. Like, we were, were going to assign each other horror movies, but what mm-hmm. about thrillers? What about movies that right. are not, they aren't by the studio labeled as horror movies, but they have horror aspects enough to be called thrillers and um, we can... That may be a bonus episode or something we could talk about. We could talk about later. But again, also, this is me. I wouldn't (laughs) necessarily call this a horror movie. It was an interesting and good movie. Still, I didn't uh, that didn't get in the way of of the stars or anything like that. Um, But yeah, I two and a half. When I say it took it took some stars off of this movie. I mean, it. like I was really enjoying myself. This was a four star movie up to that point. Wow. Four and a half star movie up to that point. And then that, because they were just like, let's go upstairs, daddy. Oh, time of death. He's been dead this whole time. I was like, no, no, he can't. He has to still be alive. This is dumb. That's well, <laughs> that's my full review of this movie. Um, I'm happy to have uh, given you a movie finally that you don't like. <laughs> yeah that that's the exact thing that i want you to get and, from what i just said right that i and, absolutely <laughs> hated this movie <laughs> i didn't say hate <laughs> um so you're wrong <laughs> <laughs> no i'm not <laughs> how this dare is you, one sir? of this is one of the best horror movies i've ever seen okay and it's it's a con it's like a it's like a contemplation of death and the afterlife that it's like to me it's so deep and rich because 
when he, he's, he, you know, the beginning, the Vietnam thing, right? Mm -hmm. He's struggling with being pulled into hell. The entire movie, literally being pulled into hell. His girlfriend's named Jezebel, short Jezzy for short. Yeah. She's doing everything to tweak him and, and mess him up. And she's burning his memories of his child. You know, she tossed him in the, the incinerator. Mm -hmm. you know, she's like having sex with the, with a, some demon or something on the, on the dance floor. I don't know what she's that was. Treating him horribly. And at one point he, he's looking at, he's laying on the chiropractic thing. And uh, by the way, I'm with you on the uh, chiropractic uh, propaganda. Yeah. It's <laughs> like... pro pro chiropractic propaganda. Yeah. So which he, is uh... difficult to say. That's a difficult <laughs> sentence to say. <laughs> I struggle when, with it every time I say it. <laughs> Whatever he's laying on the he's laying on the table. He looks up and he goes, "Anybody ever tell you you look like a cherub?" Yeah, you know, I'm like, see, he's a, he's a he's an angel trying to bring him to the light, and the world is like sucking him into the into hell. I could very easily see how this movie is the story of Job. That you know, I've heard that elsewhere. I read that elsewhere. I not, don't. I don't think not it was, in the but... sense. Not in the sense. So. Not in the first part of Job's life. Okay. So like... Like after the crap happens to him? It's after the crap happens. So you could say Jacob is having a perfectly fine life. He's a doctor. Mm -hmm. He gets sent to Vietnam, more than likely gets drafted. Right. You know, like doesn't sign up to go. Maybe he signs up to go because he's a doctor, but, you know... um. But then God, Satan, whoever, takes his kid away from him. He finds that out in Vietnam. And then from there, the ensuing punishment happens. But from the, mo the moment that he returns to New York, there's the Job connection. Where he is going through all of these hellish things and has to rid himself of them in order to uh, be a part. Yeah. It's not, it's not a, I don't think a one-to-one -one sure, sure. connection to Job, but I could, that's why I said, I could see Job characteristics in, you know, cause all of his kids are, are biblical names, biblically named. Were, were they? His wife drops off photos. His wife drops off a package. Right. And, this is where he gets the package of Foot, right the of photos, photos. That, that Jezebel mm -hmm. or Jesse burns, and Jesse is is basically making fun of. They got the those kids have weird names, Bible names. That's right, she does, and they're all Bible names. And that that's when he points out her name is Jezebel. Mm -hmm. Her name is also a a biblical name, and she then basically snaps and is like, "I don't like I don't like what the things that make you cry." And steals his pictures, and then, without him knowing, I don't think he knew. No, she burns them all except for the one that he had of his, you know, Kevin McAllister. And so, yeah. So no, I mean, Jesse, Jesse is the devil trying to lure him into hell, and his son at the like when 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 uh, the chiropractor finally like like it's the quote at the end that you said from uh, from Eckhart Tolle or whatever, yeah. Um, when he tells him that, like th the things that were th the fact that he was like wanting to stay around for this mortal life, that was that was all the stuff that was happening to him that was hellish in the movie. But whenever he kind of let it go, then he like wakes up in his um, house with his kids again and his son's alive and all this stuff. When his son takes his hand at the end and Kevin walks him up the stairs, they go into the light come becomes white. Mm -hmm. He's finally home. And yep. he's let everything go. And his son, he's reunited with his son and it's beautiful. And, you know, it makes you choke up at the end. You know, he's got his son back and he's going to go out into heaven with him. And I'm fine. If the movie, if the credits roll, I'm yeah, fine. But, <laughs> let the but, credits roll. Huh? But it, it's all, in, it's all in the mind of a man who's dying. That drove me nuts. That's interesting. I didn't, well, I, again, it's the delivery. If the credits mm. had rolled, <laughs> I would have just thought that he was still alive. Hmm. Or you would have thought maybe something else. Something else would have. Been, I, I at least felt satisfied up to that point. 
Sure, there might have been the plot hole of where's the rest of your family and blah, 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 because he the doorman still knew who he was. So you are Mm -hmm. you're in the world of this man is still alive. Right. You're in you're in that world. And his son is not alive. You know yeah. that Macaulay Culkin died. You know, right. I forget what his son's name is. You forget that he died. Right. In that in that moment, you're like, well, that that's odd that they would go upstairs and then. But still, you maybe write another ending, one where he doesn't die. Mm. One where it doesn't immediately transport you back to the beginning of the movie where he's life flighted out of being stabbed yeah. you find out that he was sta- he was friendly fire because the chemist the and the government did some shady stuff in vietnam and they all turned on each other there was no attack planned and See, but i think i think the fact that the chemist is in the movie when it's supposed to be in his mind i think that to me that tips off that this may have been an actual thing that was kind of going on in some like other dimension or whatever, because the chemist is in his mind saying these drugs were given to you and, and how you would survived. A, right. And how, well, and how would a dead man know in those, in his, in his dying moments that there was a drug given to him? You know, man, I don't know. So I, I know. there was something, there was something about it. It, 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 it just bothered me. I did well, not yeah, like that, that's the funny. That, when I when I saw it for the first time, like back in ninety eight, maybe I to to me the twist at the end uh, makes the movie four stars better. Mm. So yeah, like I said, I'll let it go. But um, it's good to know that you can be wrong once in a while. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> I Humble appreciate your grace and <laughs> you letting me be wrong. <laughs> I appreciate that so much, Steve. Yeah, I'll come up. Fine. How about this? No, you, no, 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 since no, no. You I don't want a pity down, half star. I don't want a pity star. Yeah, you're going to get one. Listen, <laughs> because last time I pressured you to come down from one star to a half star because Winnie the Pooh is a garbage movie. <laughs> it's a garbage movie. It's a garbage movie. And by the way, as of as of the recording of this podcast, you you saw a half star on your on your letterbox. I'm going to get my login in right now. It's only one. It's one <laughs> star and it should be a half star. It's a smoking hot turd. This movie, I'll bump it up a half star for you. Three out of five. Okay. I'll go. I'll go three I out can, of five. I can. I can rest easily now. Thank you. I will. I will die and go straight to heaven. And well, I don't worry want about that. The, the demons on, you know, no, no, I'm saying, you know, when we're all going to die. Well, but now I can die and not have to worry about the, the demons and the, the, the hands on the floor of the hospital and stuff like that. You know, so yeah, I'll just go straight to uh, my dead son taking me up the stairs. That's it. I'm sure that your son will appreciate hearing this podcast. Okay, movie picking time. Movie picking time. Uh, who wants to go first? I I got my movie lined up. Go for it. I, I've go been doing it. the shuffle thing. The just oh, go to no. go to my list for Steve and hit and <laughs> shuffle. And here we go. You ready? Yep. Two thousand one, man. We're going back. The Space 2000... Odyssey. No. <laughs> no. That's not a horror. <laughs> that, that's sorry. The some... year two thousand one. Go oh, ahead. Yes, the year in the year two thousand. <laughs> you remember that Conan O'Brien, bro. Um. <laughs> yeah. Also, shout out Brad, who always, every time I would say the year two thousand, like just as we would do whatever together, Brad would always say the Conan O'Brien line that I just said. Anyway, your movie, two thousand one classic horror movie, Jeepers Creepers. Oh no! Yes, Jeepers Creepers. Who is that with uh, Ma- Michael J. Fox? No, Michael J. Fox is not in this movie. That is Back to the oh, Future. Oh, he's, he's in That's Frighteners. the only movie that he is in. <laughs> no, it's Frighteners. That's what I was thinking of. The Jeep- I, I have, I've been wanting to see uh, Jeepers Creepers. So. Yes, the original. Number the, there's one. a remake? Well, there's not a remake, but it, this is the first one, I should say. Okay. 
2001. Justin Long is in this movie. Then there's another female actress that I do not remember her name at the moment. I'm looking it up, but not fast enough. Jeepers Creepers. Gina Phillips. Oh, okay. Gina Phillips, Justin Long, Jonathan Black or Breck plays the creeper. There's a, the, uh, a lady and her name in the movie is the cat lady. Okay. Uh, yeah. That's good to know, I guess. <laughs> yep. Well, I mean, when she's a, she's a pivotal character in the, uh, in the entire thing, you know what I mean? So Jeepers Creepers. Got it. Jeepers we'll Creepers. Do. That's your movie. All right. I'm going to um, make you read a movie. What? <laughs> uh, so you it it doesn't it says that you haven't seen this. Uh, Pan's Labyrinth. Pan's Labyrinth. No, I've never seen Pan's Labyrinth. It is a Guillermo del Toro movie, and it's in Spanish. Unless are you fluent in Spanish? Um, subtitles are. <laughs> uh, the first time I saw this movie, we lived in Germany, and we watched it uh, in Spanish with German subtitles. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> which was it was a little difficult, but that's why I watched it later, and I liked it even more. Um, yeah, this is a five star one from me, and it's a it's the genre that's like it doesn't say that it's a horror movie. Uh, it's like genres war, fantasy, and drama, but it's more like fantasy and horror. We can discuss why I feel like it's more horror than than drama. Uh, you'll uh, hope you like it. All right. Now it says on IMDb that the violence and gore is severe. So Steve, I'm going to have to pass. I'm not able to watch a movie. My parents won't let me watch this kind of movie. <laughs> so sorry, you what... have to pick a new movie. I'll just watch the Golden Girls instead. Uh, I'll trigger warning. There is a one scene where the guy, um, you watch a guy sew his face back together. Well, that's <laughs> way to take no all the spoilers. fun out of it, Steve. Now I'm, I'm going to know it's coming. So, yeah, enjoy that one. Awesome. Well, uh, you know, good luck. The I hope you have the correct review on this one. Yes. And I will. Uh, have, have, you've, you've seen, obviously, you've seen Jeepers Creepers, right? I have seen Jeepers Creepers, yes. Yeah. Spoiler alert a dude does not sew his face to get back together <laughs> in this movie. Yeah. Uh, so also okay. don't forget uh if you're listening to this and we know that you all of all of you are you can leave us a voicemail for these particular right. movies Jeepers Creepers and uh Pan's Labyrinth. I'm going to post them up on by this point when you're hearing this we will have already cuz we're backlogging this episode but still for the movies for next time you can call us 216-202-5495. Leave us a voicemail. Email us your movie review or questions about your the movies that we watch. Horrors yet unseen at gmail.com. And uh, yeah, that's cool. that's the end of the podcast. So we'll see you all next podcast. week. <laughs> that's it. End of the podcast. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> All right, listeners, that's a wrap for another episode of Horrors Yet Unseen. Thanks for joining us. And we'd love for you to become part of the conversation. Just drop us a voicemail at 1216-202-5495 or email us at horrorsyetunseen at gmail.com. And keep up with the latest by following us on Instagram. That handle is at horrorsyetunseenpod. We'd also appreciate it if you like and review our show on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Your support means a lot to us. See you next time.